Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of a Tatiana Jefferson and Aaron Dean? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, and offer my analysis. Tatiana Jefferson was born on November 28, 1990, and grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. She graduated from a university in Louisiana with a bachelor's degree in chemistry pre-med. She wanted to be a physician someday. After graduating, she returned home to care for her mother, who had some health concerns. Tatiana had a job in pharmaceutical equipment sales and was saving money for medical school. A man named Aaron Dean also lived in the Fort Worth area. He had been born on October 27, 1984, which made him about six years older than Tatiana. On one occasion in 2004, Aaron was in the campus library at the University of Texas at Arlington when he touched a woman's breast. He received a citation for assault by contact, which is a Class C misdemeanor. Aaron Dean was convicted of this charge after pleading no contest. In March 2018, he graduated from the Fort Worth Police Academy. He joined the Fort Worth Police Department the next month. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On October 12, 2019, a Tatiana Jefferson was at her residence on the 1200 block of East Allen Avenue in Fort Worth, Texas. She was babysitting her eight-year-old nephew, Zion Carr. At some point, she and her nephew attempted to cook hamburgers, but burned them. They opened the front and side doors to allow the smoke to exit the house. At about 2.24 a.m., a neighbor called the police because they had seen the front door of the house open. The caller said that both vehicles were in the driveway and the occupants never left the door open. Officer Aaron Dean and his partner, Officer Carol Darch, were dispatched to the home. They were responding to an open structure call. As they approached the house, they saw that both the front and side doors were open but the storm doors were closed. The officers looked through each of the storm doors, but did not see anyone in the front room. They did not announce their presence. Instead of knocking on the front door, Aaron walked through a gate into the backyard, shining his flashlight. A Tatiana and her nephew were playing video games in the back room of the house when she told him that she heard a noise outside. She retrieved a pistol from her purse, which was right below the window. The pistol was legally owned, and she had a concealed carry permit. She manually cycled the action of the weapon, even though there was already a cartridge in the chamber. Therefore, she ejected an intact cartridge and loaded another cartridge from the magazine into the chamber. At this point, she looked out of the bedroom window. Her nephew initially said that his aunt raised the gun a little bit, but later he said the gun was by her side and she did not raise it. At about 3.05 a.m., Aaron Dean shined his flashlight into the bedroom window and saw a figure. He drew his pistol and said, put your hands up, show me your hands. At this time, he fired one shot into the house. Only half a second passed between the command and the gunshot. A Tatiana Jefferson was struck in the chest and the bullet lodged in her back. Aaron Dean and his partner entered the house. They found a Tatiana mortally wounded on the floor near the window. Her pistol was next to her. Tatiana died not long after this. Aaron Dean was arrested two days later, on October 14, 2019, and was charged with murder. He was released on a $200,000 bond three hours after being arrested. After several delays, Aaron's trial finally started on December 5, 2022. On December 15, Aaron Dean was found not guilty of murder, but found guilty of manslaughter. Five days later, he was sentenced to 11 years and 10 months in prison. Now moving to my analysis. The verdict in this case was upsetting for many people in various ways. Some people believe Aaron should be convicted of murder instead of manslaughter. Others believe that he was not guilty of anything. This was just a tragic accident. He was only doing his job. This brings me to the question, was Aaron Dean guilty of any crime in this case? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Aaron Dean was guilty of either murder or manslaughter, starting with the inculpatory factors. 
There is no question that Aaron shot and killed a homeowner in her residence. He fired from the outside of her house, through a window, and into her bedroom. A Tatiana had a reasonable expectation of privacy in her own home and was never warned about the presence of police officers on her property. She was legally in the possession of a firearm, which she retrieved due to Aaron's behavior, namely him walking around her backyard. After Aaron Dean issued his verbal command, he waited only half a second before firing. A Tatiana Jefferson did not have time to comply with his command. In addition, he still failed to identify himself as a police officer. Aaron may not have seen a gun when he fired his weapon. Aaron yelled, put your hands up, show me your hands. He never mentioned a gun. Why didn't he say drop the gun? If he was looking down the barrel of a pistol, one would think that the word gun would come to mind quicker than the word hands. When Aaron entered the house, he walked up to a Tatiana as she was dying and noticed her gun next to her. He said to his partner, I see what looks like a weapon here. That doesn't sound like someone who had just seen a gun a few moments earlier. One would think that he would have expected to find the gun and known exactly what was there. Aaron's partner, Carol, saw a face in the window right before Aaron fired his weapon, but she did not see a gun. Aaron allowed his partner to run into the house after the shooting without ever saying anything about a gun. He had just shot somebody who supposedly had a firearm, yet he didn't care to warn his partner about the gun. A Tatiana may not have been pointing her gun at Aaron. The path of the bullet through her body suggests that she was leaning over quite a bit when she was struck. Again, the bullet entered her chest, but ended up in her back. Glass sprayed on her body, but not on her hands. If she was pointing a gun, her hands would have been in front of her body. Her nephew Zion testified in court that his aunt was holding the gun by her side. A Tatiana was not committing a crime when she was shot and killed. Even if she was pointing a gun, she had the right to do so because she did not know Aaron was a police officer. She could not see him behind the flashlight due to the glare. She was trying to defend herself and her nephew. It's never a good idea to point a gun at something you don't intend to shoot, but that doesn't mean that her behavior was illegal. Aaron Dean created a danger and then killed someone to protect himself. A person cannot protect themselves from a dangerous situation they caused and claim self-defense. Moving to the exculpatory factors, when Zion Carr was initially interviewed by the police, he said that his aunt had raised the gun a little bit. This is different from his testimony in court when he said the gun was at her side. If a Tatiana was pointing the gun, then she was engaging in an aggressive act that one could argue represents deadly force. Aaron Dean was wearing a police uniform, which included a hat, badge, and insignia on his shoulders. He may have been an incompetent police officer, but it was clear from his uniform that he was technically an officer. Aaron was trained to meet deadly force with deadly force. His life very well may have been in danger when he fired. Whether Aaron knew about the gun or not, the person he shot was holding a gun. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Aaron Dean was guilty? As far as the murder charge, I think that Aaron was guilty of murder in reality, but I do not think he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The doubt would be that the victim may have been pointing a gun. Moving to the manslaughter charge, I agree with the jury. Aaron was guilty. He did not intentionally commit murder, but he was reckless. I think the bottom line in this case comes down to this. A woman was startled in her own home by police officers who did not announce their presence. She feared for her safety and the safety of her nephew. When she went to investigate, she was shot and killed. Aaron provoked the situation. He caused himself to be in jeopardy. He had no right to defend himself under those circumstances. Moving to the next section, here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, prior to being hired by the Fort Worth Police Department, Aaron Dean was evaluated by a mental health professional. The clinician indicated that Aaron had grandiose, domineering, and over-controlling personality traits. He had a narcissistic personality style, which could cause problems with his decision-making, judgment, and relational skills. In addition, he was more likely to engage in behaviors that would put others and himself at risk. The clinician thought that Aaron was dominant and verbally aggressive. It's worth noting that three other clinicians thought that Aaron was fine. Mental health evaluations are highly subjective and often incorrect, 
but I still find it interesting that the clinician found Aaron to be dominant and aggressive. These traits are not uncommon for police officers. As I've talked about in other videos, subclinical psychopathy can actually be helpful for police officers. It permits them to be fearless and take control, which is sometimes necessary. The difficulty for Aaron was probably that these traits were combined with narcissism. So it wasn't just that he was dominant and aggressive, he had a sense of grandiosity and a sense of entitlement. When somebody like this is given legitimate authority, like that of a police officer, they can become dangerous. This brings me to item number two. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Aaron Dean became a police officer because he was looking for action. He wanted to be involved in violent situations. The open structure call on October 12, 2019, led him to believe that there might be a burglary in progress. Aaron went into the backyard without announcing himself because he wanted to find trouble. He was looking for a reason to be aggressive. When he saw a Tatiana in the window, that was all the justification he needed to use deadly force. In his mind, his right to self-defense was absolute, no matter what he did. It didn't matter that he caused the danger. It didn't matter that he did not see a gun. He was not going to give up his big chance to shoot someone. He believed that his authority should have been automatically recognized, even without announcing himself. His authority was so powerful, it was telepathic. His verbal commands demanded an immediate response, even a response which was faster than humanly possible. His grandiosity was so high that if people needed to become supernatural to obey his commands, then they better do it. Now moving to item number three. There is this sense with certain cases that if these circumstances were identical except for the outcome, the state would take the opposite position based only on the outcome. Here's what I mean by this. Say, for instance, in this case, the outcome was different, and a Tatiana Jefferson shot and killed Aaron Dean. When he was delivering his verbal warning, she pulled the trigger, and he never did. The passionate defense of a Tatiana that was evident in the state's closing argument would be nowhere to be found the state would have prosecuted her for killing a police officer. They would have told the jury about the recklessness of a citizen pointing a gun at a police officer. They would have said that she gave the officer no warning. They would have blamed her for leaving her doors open and attracting the police in the first place. And they would have made Aaron Dean look like a hero, not a dominant and aggressive bully. I think the reality is that Tatiana was a victim, but regardless, she did take an unnecessary risk. In home defense situations, it's rarely a good idea to make oneself visible to a potential intruder, for instance, by standing in front of a window in full view. Which brings me to my final thoughts. An innocent woman made a small mistake when trying to assess a threat caused by a narcissist, and the narcissist drastically overreacted and made her pay for it. This is what frequently happens when dealing with a narcissist. They like to find one little thing that a person does wrong and flip the whole story around so they can play the victim. This justifies the narcissist becoming the aggressor. Fortunately, most of these interactions with the narcissist don't result in a fatality, but this case teaches a valid lesson about the dangers of narcissism either way. Those are my thoughts in the case of Tatiana Jefferson and Aaron Dean. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.